So acceleration from here we can see is root 2v root over 1 minus cos theta do you know 1 minus cos theta is 2 sine square theta by 2. So we can write this as root 2 sine theta by 2 basic trigonometry and delta t time taken would be distance upon speed distance covered is theta angular distance cover is theta and upon speed upon angular speed theta upon omega this basically root 2 into root 2 is 2 and we can bring this 2 down and this omega up do you know when theta is tending to 0 the limit of this is 1 if you have not studied limit yet, if you don't know that sine theta by theta, theta tending to 0 is equal to 1, then you know from now. I'm not going to give you the proof of this because that's really the job of your maths teacher. But sine theta by theta, if theta is very small, is 1. This you must know. Similarly, the theta here is theta by 2. You can make this theta by 2 as phi. It's basically written sine phi upon phi and theta I'm telling you is we are taking the whole situation when the angular this theta is very small then only this delta v vector will be coming perpendicular parallel to the radius vector this theta is very small so this whole thing is one so what you are left with is just omega into v and we have known before that v is equal to omega into r so acceleration centripetal comes out as omega square into r centripetal acceleration is equal to omega square into r instead of instead of substituting v we could have substituted omega omega is v upon r so this will come out as v square upon r okay you can interconvert v and omega by the relation v is equal to omega r Okay, this was the first relation that we saw and this is the second relation that we are seeing. And that's it. That's the crux of the chapter. The centripetal acceleration that is not responsible for change in velocity for the simple fact that centripetal acceleration is perpendicular to velocity. So the force, the centripetal force ha doesn't have any component along the velocity. So it cannot change the velocity, it only changes that direction. So this amount of acceleration is required to change the direction of the particle when it is moving round and round in a circle. So just to change the direction, you require a force. That force will be mass times this acceleration. So centripetal force will be m times omega square r or mv square upon r. This is the acceleration. Okay. First important relation, second important relation. Centripetal acceleration is V square upon R. Now, this is centripetal acceleration. Apart from this, you could have tangential acceleration that will increase the velocity and that will be along the tangent always. Has nothing to do, that will be perpendicular to the radius. So it will have no component along the radius. That will be purely utilized to increase the speed of the particle. That you can have and you can write that acceleration AT always as dv by dt so these will be the two accelerations one will be centripetal acceleration omega square into r or v square upon r and another will be tangential acceleration that will be responsible for increasing or decreasing the velocity so tangential acceleration centripetal acceleration they both have perpendicular to each other tangential acceleration is along the tangent centripetal acceleration is along the radius both are perpendicular Okay, so most of the time in circular motion, you will be breaking the velocity component and acceleration along the tangent and along the radius because they both are perpendicular to each other. So these are the two kind of accelerations. This is the relation from constraint V is equal to omega R and A tangential acceleration is equal to omega into alpha. So these are the four things we have studied up till now. Now this I have shown you by one method that centripetal acceleration is omega into R vectorially and having some feel of physics i'm going to show you by a pure mathematics method as well so before we go ahead i'm going to show you one more way to come to this value of centripetal acceleration
Okay, so far you understand everything, no problem. There are four formulas that we've studied and you should really write them at least 10 times each on paper so that you really imbibe them into yourself. Now we'll do the same thing again. We'll again find the centripetal acceleration but using some math. It started from here, it came here. Now suppose at, it, it is at any general, it is at any general position theta and I'm defining two unit vectors. One radially outward, I'm calling at that as ER, unit vector. You remember unit vector? Magnitude 1. And I'm defining another unit vector perpendicular to it, that means tangentially. And I'm calling that as ET, unit ET cap. Right, so we know that it is a unit vector, so ET cap, this vector, and ER cap, the magnitude of that will be equal to 1. So suppose this particle, this position is P and the center we are representing by O. Then this position is OP vector. The position of the particle is start, this OP vector, starting from O, ending at P. So as P goes round and round, this OP vector will also be rotating. So we can represent the position as OP vector. An OP vector will be R, the length of the vector that will be equal to the length of the radius and the direction. This direction really outward we have taken as ER cap. This can be written as the position of the particle. Now, we can break ET vector as ET vector can be broken if this angle is theta, this angle is also theta, then uh, this ER, first let's see ER. ER vector can be broken as cos theta I cap. Magnitude of ER vector is 1. So X component is just 1 into cos theta I cap plus sin theta J cap. And similarly, E2 vector can be broken as minus sin theta i cap plus cos theta j cap. You can see. Use simple trigonometry and break e, find the angle that ET is making with vertical or horizontal and break ET into horizontal and vertical. This is how ET can be broken. Now R vector again OP vector that is position vector R vector can be written as the magnitude which is R and this ER, ER cap ER cap we have written it as cos theta I cap plus sine theta J cap this is how we can write position vector now velocity velocity is change in position vector per unit time right this is velocity vector velocity is change in position upon time rate of change of position so dr by dt basically is velocity vector so if you differentiate this r is a constant if you differentiate this you get do you get this when you differentiate cos theta you get minus sine theta differentiation of cos theta would be minus sine theta into d theta by dt theta is also a variable it's not a constant so you have to apply you know chain rule here so d theta by dt will be omega for both the terms we can bring that out so this is velocity vector and for acceleration what you have to do again differentiate it find dv by dt do that yourself find dv by dt from here and see what you are getting 